Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu. And yesterday on the show, I had on native Houstonian Michelle Carr, the creative mind behind Taste and Sea Life. Today, I have another native Houstonian as my guest, Shelly Arnold, who is the president and CEO of the Memorial Park Conservancy. My conversation with Shelly is going to span two episodes. Today, we'll talk about what makes Memorial Park so special and one of the first changes coming to the park. And then tomorrow, Shelly is going to explain the second big change that will be happening and completed in 2020 in Houston and a little bit more about some of the ways you can get involved in the park and fun activities and things to check out. Before I start sharing our conversation, let me tell you a little bit more about Shelly. Shelly joined the Conservancy in 2013 and has led the creation and adoption of the 2015 Memorial Park Master Plan, launched its associated capital campaign, initiated project execution, and transitioned the management and operations of 1,100 acres of Memorial Park to the Conservancy. Shelly and the leadership team she established grew the organization from three employees to 25 and from a $500,000 annual budget to a $17 million annual budget. This year, the Conservancy announced a $70 million donation to Memorial Park, the largest private donation in the history of the Houston Park System, which established a $205 million public-private partnership commitment for Memorial Park's capital campaign and secured maintenance and operations funding for the park. Shelly and her team have also delivered multiple park improvements, including the planting of over 100,000 trees and seedlings, Ecological restoration work applied to 600 acres of park space, amenity upgrades, and enhanced user experience. As a native Houstonian, Shelly cares deeply about our parks, bayous, green spaces, and the wildlife that inhabit them. Welcome to the podcast, Shelly. I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. Thanks. It's great to be here. So one of the reasons I'm so excited to chat with you is that I've enjoyed Memorial Park personally when I lived in Houston and but never really, you know, got to learn more about it, just kind of, you know, used it, appreciated it. And then last month I was back in Houston and stopped by the running center, which is a, is definitely a part of the park that I don't think a lot of people know about, but as a runner, I, I definitely enjoy and, and saw all these billboards up and posters up about all the great things going on. So what could you tell us? I mean, maybe we'll talk about some of the more recent things a little bit later in the podcast, but could you just share like, what's, what's so special about Memorial Park? What, what can you tell us just in general, some basics about it? Sure, happy to. Um, well, first, Memorial Park is distinctive locally and even nationally. Um, some of the things that make it distinctive on a national basis, people don't know about and they're surprised about. Um, mm-hmm. It's one of the larger urban parks in the country. It's Houston, Houston's largest urban park. Um, it has a very interesting cultural history. Memorial Park is named after the soldiers who trained here. This was a World War One training camp, one of a handful across the country called Camp Logan. Um, they trained here for World War One, and the park is named for those soldiers who died in World War One after training here. Um, it has a lot. Uh, the, the park has just a rich history and legacy, and is and has an important position in Houston's military history nationally. Um, The park is also nationally distinctive and locally distinctive um, because it's such a large, at 1,500 acres, it's twice the size, it's almost twice the size of Central Park, Mm -hmm. and it's such a large urban wilderness space, so centrally located. It might be the largest, it's one of the largest centrally located urban forests in the country. Um, Often its cities might have a forest a large forest on the perimeter of a city, but this is right in the heart of Houston. Mm-hmm. And so that's pretty, pretty distinctive. It has the world's, I mean, I'm sorry, the country's most popular running loop, the Seymour mm-hmm. Lieberman trail, the nearly three mile loop and soon to be three mile loop. And that was, uh, that was voted by, I think a running club, a national running survey or something like that. I don't actually know the source on that, sure. but I'm happy that they voted. You know, we have thousands of people a day, 
using that trail. And uh, the other um, thing that makes Memorial Park really unique, certainly locally and likely nationally, it really are the, it's a variety of things to do. There are so there's so much to do here, from it really it, you know, enjoying the the natural aspect of the park, the nature side. Mm-hmm. You can you know go go on a walk, bird watch. A lot of people come here really just to soak in nature. Um, it's a really healthy thing to do, and others come here to picnic. Others come here for active recreation. And one time I just did an inventory of all the th- the things that people do here that are quote unquote programs. Mm-hmm. And there's over 40. Wow. Um, and, and, and it's just, there's a lot to do in these 1500 acres. And I, and I also want to say that the park itself is consists of this 1500 acre site that is largely green space. And that includes this green space includes uh, the Houston Arboretum and Nature Center, and then uh, also 30, over 30 miles of trails, and it includes um, a 250-acre golf course. And so about 1,100 of the acres outside the Arboretum are green space. And when we add the Ar- Arboretum in, it's, it's really over 1,200. It's it's pretty big. Um I'll pause there in case you have more questions. No, no, no. I mean, and that's awesome. I mean, unfortunately, I never got to enjoy any of the, you know, the programmings. I'd always go and just, you know, go for my run, but absolutely love that loop in Memorial Park. And my clients and I always really appreciated the fact that it was a non-paved path, so not a lot of impact that was actually lit up at night. So we were able to, you know, get out of that heat of the day, enjoy a workout and actually be able to see where we were going, which I think is very unique to Memorial Park. Right, right. It, it is such a popular loop. And I, I will say the, the, the loop isn't actually three miles. Many people think it is. It's almost three miles. Mm-hmm. And we have, um, we have a, a master plan underway right now that over 3,000, it's in, it's in execution. We're delivering capital improvements to the park. And over 3,000 Houstonians participated in really defining what Memorial Park was going to be Mm. for generations to come, starting today. Hi, friends. I hope you're enjoying this episode while getting in a walk. If you only have 15 minutes and are going for an out and back walk, that was your halfway point reminder. We're about seven and a half minutes into the episode, so you want to turn around now. All right, back to Shelly. And over 75 consultants, including, you know, 30 or so scientists, ecological scientists participated. And one of the outputs is going to be that we will have a three mile Seymour Lieberman trail. (laughs) That's That's awesome. That's something that the 90% of the folks that use the park are runners and, or use that trail, maybe walkers and runners, a combination. And that's something they've asked for. They also, uh, they ask for safe crossing across Memorial Mm -hmm. Drive in the master planning input process. They ask for access to spaces in the park that they don't feel they can get to. They don't even know what's there or where they are. Right. Um, people ask for basics like restrooms and parking. Um, and then they ask for improvements in what's here. But what we heard loud and clear when we, when we did, we did three months of online survey and we did eight public meetings across the city and we did many, many workshops and um, what we, what we, and, and then lots of studies. Mm-hmm. What we found, what we heard loud and clear is that the, that people consider Memorial Park, it, it kind of has two characteristics, two primary characteristics. One is this urban wilderness, mm-hmm. and one other uh, identifier is, is this active recreation park. And people said, it, please improve, but do not change the fundamental character of our park. Mm-hmm. And so what that meant was we can um, add improvements, and I'll describe some of the changes that are happening and going mm-hmm. to happen in the park. We can add improvements such as uh, crossings and access and improve the ecology of the park, which I can speak about in a minute. But but don't bring big concerts in. Don't bring huge activities in. Sure. Don't, you know, don't replicate what is already being covered in nearby parks. Make what, he, what, what is here very, very special. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we focused on. And that's uh, kind of the basis of the plan is – is improving upon what's here and taking it to the next level and making it enduring. If you'd like, you know, I can tell you uh, some key things that your users are going to see, your listeners are going to see, I should say our users, 
and your listeners are going to see in the next few years some of the changes. Yeah, no, that would be awesome to to hear what, what's what's coming because, you know, just kind of seeing a cursory view when I visited was exciting, but it'd be great to get the behind the scenes, you know, what's really going on, right. what we can look for. Exactly. Well, let me uh, let me just talk about a few key principles. Um, I, I mentioned improving, you know, building upon what's here, um, but also there were, you know, the, the park's cut into 25 different pieces by roads, by the railroad, by Memorial Drive, mm-hmm. and how to stitch it back together is kind of one key concept. And that speaks to that access and safe crossing that people ask for. Um, other, other things that we're improving, people remember the drought. People remember the severity of the drought, drought mm-hmm. Texas, and particularly in Houston in Memorial Park. It was so visible and painful for Houstonians, 2011-2012 uh, timeframe. We lost anywhere from tw- uh, 50 to 90 percent of the tree canopy of this park in different in different spots in the park, and overall, about half of, of the trees were lost wow. during this wow. time. It was a very painful time for for people who use Memorial Park and who drive through Memorial Park, who simply enjoy Memorial Park, and that was because the trees that were here, a lot of them were at the end of their life expectancy. They were they grew or they were they were planted right after the Camp Logan, the World War I time frame. So, you know, the, the 19s, you know, or the early 1900s, mm-hmm. this used to be a logging site. Some of them just sprung up from seed banks that already existed because Camp Logan had been fairly cleared out. There were some trees, but it was also pretty clear. It wasn't a forest during the military training occupation of this site. Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, the trees grew up. And so they were almost 100 years old and they'd already been stressed by natural forces like Hurricane Ike natural disruption. And so uh, by the time the drought came along, it hastened, sadly, it hastened the death of the trees that were at the end of their life expectancy. And because there had not been an active management of the land to ensure that uh, invasive plants and trees were kept at bay, there wasn't anything coming up to take their place. Mm. And that's why it was such a visceral, people felt so, you know, so sad about the change because there it wasn't a net it wasn't something that was natural um in terms of you know if this if this was an undisturbed natural site mm-hmm. it would it would it would have been able to take care of itself but humans have been here humans you know cleared right. the site and so this is the result then of not touching the site from an active management perspective for so many years and so i i say that because what we're doing now as part of the output of the master plan is We've defined the ecologies that are native to this site and that can withstand natural disruptions. Mm -hmm. And we've defined how to create a sustainable set of ecologies inside this park that range from different kinds of forests. Um, Forests near the bio would be different than forests more kind of upland away from the bio and different soils to Mm -hmm. prairies, which actually help manage stormwater and absorb stormwater very deeply to um, savannas. And, and that is what Memorial Park is becoming on its own, and we are facilitating that process. Another thing that we discovered is that the soils are, um, are sterile or fairly sterile, and so we're enhancing the soil with, with tr- trees from the drought. Um, we, it's kind of a cycle of life story. The trees mm-hmm. that we lost in the drought, we mulched and turned into compost and are using that to enrich the soil so that future life, uh, can thrive. And what grows here can grow healthy and strong and be resilient. And we do have a palette of what should be growing here, and that's what we're planting here. And so that's a, this ecological transformation and restoration is a, and, and richer habitat, establishing richer habitat is a key tenet of the master plan. Improving the amenities is a key tenet of the master plan. Providing for the basics, like I mentioned, bathrooms and parking, mm-hmm. key tenet. Putting um, a plan in place with funding to allow to, to allow us to operate the park and take care of the park, in addition to these capital improvements that are being made, that was a key and fundamental for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, I w- will tell you, our partners, uh, our now partners at the Kinder Foundation and the city and the Uptown Development Authority worked really closely together to define this future for Memorial Park and define the funding source. We're still raising funds. But we've got a good basic plan and good basic level of funding 
to start us down this path for the next 30 years or so. It's, it's really exciting. And so to circle back, mm-hmm. what are your users seeing and what are they going to see? I should say our users and your listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, they're seeing a lot of Memorial Park Conservancy employees taking care of the park on a day-to-day basis. It's We have about five or six times um, what was well, of coverage that compared to what was in, what was done in the park only three years ago, mm-hmm. and that's really due to generous, generous uh, Houstonians, foundations, individuals that are helping us take care of this park and the arrangements we've made with the city of Houston and the Uptown Development Authority. So you're seeing that you're seeing us actively restoring and or transforming the ecologies. You're seeing invasive control work. Something else that you're seeing is our first project that is uh, the first piece of its opening very soon. The Eastern Glades project is a 100-acre project on the east side of the park, bordering Memorial and the Crestwood neighborhood. And it's really an area of the park that was inaccessible to almost all users. And we, we the partner at the TERS, the Uptown Development Authority, moved is moving. They've actually moved it already, but the other one hasn't closed down. The west the East Loop Road and the Seymour Lieberman Trail. And when that divided that property in half, so they've moved it and it's getting ready to open. That's why the trail is going to be three miles long. We're opening up a restroom in the next couple of weeks, a nice new restroom, which we think will be very popular because of its location on the Seymour Lieberman Trail. Mm -hmm. And uh, the restroom has got uh, the architecture is inspired by the Camp Logan architecture, the tent. And so any buildings that we build, there won't be very many in the park are inspired and informed by this kind of architecture from the park's history. Um, so we're opening this up soon. The fence, the, the fencing will come down some of it and you'll be able to, users will be able to enjoy this new trail, this longer trail, new restrooms, some really nice new planting and that's, and some and nice new lighting. That's pretty exciting. That's yeah. the beginning. It's kind of the, you know, the road move and all of that. They'll see the new parking. That's the beginning of this project, this hundred acre project. The rest of it will be constructed and planted um, by and built and finished by 20 and be open by 2020. And the rest of it is um, nine acres of picnic area that will be, you know, throw down a blanket amongst the grasses and trees. It'll be a really mm-hmm. nice, feel like a real natural setting, um, picnic tables, picnic pavilions, and a five acre lake and wetlands area adjacent to that. And you'll be able to explore that. It'll, you know, you'll, you'll, the experience will be one of water birds and turtles. You'll be mm-hmm. able to explore that with boardwalks and trails. It's a really pristine wetland area in this area of the park. And it's really a nice, nice area on the north side of Memorial Drive in the park that nobody really knows about or has had mm-hmm. access to. Mm-hmm. So we're going to open that access up in a very careful way for um, for users. And there will be terraces and overlooks and boardwalks and another restroom. And, um, and just an improved running, walking experience around the trail and around the trails actually new trails so that's what's first do you have any questions about that project and it, and i'll then jump into the next project that uh, people will see next no i mean that sounds exciting i know you know here and there i would see a lot of the the cool birds and wildlife you know after a rainstorm but it probably be you know it sounds like you'll be able to see that you know more frequently with some of those improvements uh we intend to not just protect, but enhance the habitat Mm -hmm. and even create some new habitat. The Mm -hmm. lake and wetlands area is an example of new habitat. There are wetlands over there and we're expanding them. The lake will be a new feature. And part of the lake's purpose is stormwater management Mm -hmm. to collect stormwater that comes from different areas of the park. Hi, friends. It's Catherine, and I'm cutting in here to pause my conversation with Shelly for now because... As you can tell, we talked for a lot more than 15 minutes. There's so many exciting things happening currently and coming to Memorial Park. So make sure you subscribe to the show so you don't miss tomorrow's episode. And in the meantime, you can head on over to the show notes. Go to fitarmadillo.com slash podcast to see all the links for Memorial Park and maybe check out something that is happening in the next few days so you can enjoy the park for yourself if you're a Houstonian or maybe plan a trip and check out memorial park while you are visiting thank you so much for listening to this episode and if you subscribe i will chat with you tomorrow i can't wait to 
share the rest of this conversation with you. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time.